by us sitting around here singing that and saying that, no matter what you're living in and what you're feeling like, when you just start singing something, I'm greatly blessed, I'm highly favored, I'm made perfect child of God. When you just start saying that, something beyond you goes to work. Amen. Amen. And so a lot of people in here, that's become a favorite song, a theme song almost, but i got to tell about uh, Julie and I, I got too many names that you're going to have to tell me. Amanda, I know it, it's in there somewhere, but i got to tell you a little bit about Amanda. That's their favorite song, Greatly Blessed, Highly Favored. Amanda and Julie and them, they all stood out in her yard one night and watched their house burn to the ground and everything they owned. Am I telling that right? While they were standing in the yard watching their house burn to the ground, they were holding hands and joining together as a family, singing. Greatly blessed. Highly favored. I'm doing that's powerful. Now they got a bigger house than they had, a better house than they had, and all the stuff inside of it's newer than they had and better than they had. Is my tone right? That's why we sing it. Because we believe it. Yeah. And just by us singing and it starts happening. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Oh, uh, that's good. I'll tell you. I don't know. One reason is because, hey, let me, I just, this is just us home folks and it's not as big a crowd as we usually have, so I just feel a little free to do what we want. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to just, I'm going to read you something to get us started and then we'll just see where it goes, all right? Just to go along with that. Just to go along with that. Psalm 103. If you need a favorite song, Psalm 103 will do. It's the one that starts out in the beginning. He says, Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. You know, going on that. It says, in reverse, it says in verse 2, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget none of His benefits. Forget none of His benefits. It says, Who pardons all, A-L-L, -L, mm -hmm. All your iniquities, who heals all, A-L-L, -L, your diseases, Amen. who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the all. Amen. Now when he got done, how many of your transgressions were left? Okay, when he got done, how many of your diseases were left? Alright, now listen, this is where I'm getting at. Verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, you His angels, mighty and strength, who perform His Word, obeying the voice of His Word. Obeying the voice of His Word. Now, if, we're, if His Word's going to get voice, who's going to give voice to it? The body. Where's the voice come from? The body. We're the body. So if this voice is going to get Word, get if this word's going to get voice, who's going to give voice to it? So when we give voice to it, when we sing songs, that's the word. Whether it's a song or not, or put music to it, that's the word. What yeah. we just sang is the word. And when we put voice to that, this right here says that angels go to work and perform the voice of the word. See, by us singing that, just, just by us sitting around singing that, a, a command from heaven has left heaven and went to the angels and says, perform it. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. They're working right now. That's why you get the rest. Amen. <laughs> They're working. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm going to do. I was thinking the same as Sarah. I, I got a little something if I need it, but we ain't this, we ain't this light very often. And, you know, I take this pretty serious. And I've learned that faith comes by hearing. And so I, I really count it uh, valuable and protected of what we hear. And I know when you have a crowd of bigger people as we usually have, there's all kinds of stuff that come in here. If you think if you think that there's not stuff that comes in here, uh, you don't stand here once in a while. And so I don't turn this, I don't, I don't do this very often. But since it's just us, I think we can. Uh, so I, I'm, like Sarah, I'm taking requests. 
Maybe that ain't the right way to say it, but I, I, I mean, I just know, I know that I, I know that I'm kind of radical, and I know that I push, push our, push our minds sometimes, and so, you know, I just want to know if somebody struggling with something, or somebody got a question with something, or somebody uh, wants help with something, or what, and if you don't, I'll go on with something of my own, but here's your opportunity. I was in marriage session Sunday night. It was really good. Thank you for bringing that up. I was going to announce that again and forgot it. Really good. We, uh, uh, for those of you who maybe wasn't here last week, whatever, I went public with it. So it's, uh, but 6.30 on Sunday nights, down here in the restroom, hopefully we don't get too big, but uh, 6.30 on Sunday nights, we're just going to dive in because I, I know God's been showing me and He's been showing a lot more other people. Uh, some stuff about marriage and how to get grace, grace revelation that's changed our lives and changed our relationship with God so much is also a way of life where we're supposed to be associating with each other. And so Sunday nights we're going to dive into that and we're going to learn. And God's going to show us that there's uh, more to marriage than we've ever imagined. That it's a bigger gift than we've ever thought it was. There's more, okay, whoever whoever you know that has the most perfect marriage that you've seen, I believe it's better than that. Amen. Or else the enemy wouldn't be fighting it so hard. So we're going to dive into that and learn how to live in grace with each other. And we're going to learn how to, we're going to get grace into our marriages and learn and feel, figure that out and heal and, and grow and learn. So it was really good. We started out good. We're going, it's good. And it ain't just for married folks. It ain't just for folks that's married is in trouble. He, he, anybody, just come on. If you ever think you're going to be married, you better come learn. <laughs> you don't think you need it yet, but let me tell you, you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you hear me? body living sacrifice is your reasonable service. That's what you're talking about. Uh, it says, it says be, uh, not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's good. That's good. You know, uh, what we talk about all the time by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and perfect acceptable will of God. And uh, I, I've come to find out that, you know, growing up in religion, I always said, always really hit hard on the part that said, present your body a living sacrifice. You know, like, you've got to sacrifice. You've got to sacrifice. It's all up to you. You know, you've got to sacrifice and all that. And, uh, you know, it says, he's talking about proving what the will of God is. 
It says in the end of verse 2. Is that right? Somebody got it? Then they're talking about proving what the will of God is. In order for us to prove what the will of God is, we're going to have to count our body as dead. Not be conformed to the world because of how we are conformed to the world was before you got born again. This... I was going to talk about healing tonight anyway, but this part of healing is part of anything that you needed. But but you before you got born again, your only access to information, your mind gathers information, it's gathering it right now whether you realize it or not. And before you're born again, your only access to information is through your body. Five senses. Touch, smell, see, hear. You know, that's... That's your, that's your way of gathering information. Oh, that's hot. Oh, that hurts. Or, oh, that hurt. You know, that's, that's how your mind gathers information. But, but when you get born again, now you've got a new source. Before you get born again, you're spiritually dead. Separated from God. Born of Adam. And, and so, when you get born again, now you're spiritually alive. You've got a new source for your mind to gather information. That's why sometimes after you get born again, it actually gets tougher. Because now you've got a... Now you've got two sources wrestling against each other saying, oh, and so your mind is gathering information. It was trained to gather information from the world, but now you've got this new source of truth where the Word is and where the power is and where God is. And so he's saying, you're going to have to count your body as dead. By the renewing of your mind, don't be conformed to the world anymore, but be transformed. Train your mind to start getting your information from here. And then you'll prove what the perfect and good and acceptable will of God is. See, that's what I tell all the time. I'm not healed because I feel healed. I'm not healed because the doctor says I'm healed or the tests say I'm healed. I'm healed because this says I'm healed. Amen. And when I start when I start transforming, see it doesn't it doesn't necessarily happen just because, oh well, Jason said so, okay, I'm all healed, and boom. Sometimes it happens that way. I like it when it does. But, but a lot of the time it happens by us renewing our mind. Coming to, and you know what? I got to hear it again. 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 Because every time I hear it, it's getting down in me more. And, and retraining. I don't, everybody in here is a different age when they got saved or when they became a believer. But however long till then, you've been training your mind to gather its truth from other sources. When you got born again, your truth comes now from another source. That's right. That's right. But Jason, uh, when you spoke on healing, buddy, I fell about 25 feet. Broke my back in a couple of places. Broke my sternum, crushed my chest up. Had internal bleeding, internal head injuries, I believe.
nothing going on with me. I said, what's going on with you folks out here? I said, leave me alone. I'm all right. A couple of days I told her, I said, Phyllis, I'll tell you what's going on. Leave me, I'll quit that oxycontin. She said, do you know what the doctor said? I said, you know what the Lord said? She said, I'll help you do it. Right. So uh, when it was time to go back to the doctor from oxycontin, he was sitting with his back to me. He said, it's time for a I said, uh, never mind. I said, I don't want it. He spun around on that stool, and he said, uh, okay, he said, you went to the doctor to help me, didn't you? I said, I sure did. I said, I sure did. He said, then. But the short aggravates to get people to say that they can't quit smoking, chewing, cursing, whatever it is in their life, a storm in their life. Maybe they can't quit. The flesh is awful weak. But they'll take the Lord that we serve and be sincere and ask Him to help them do it. There's nothing that He won't do for me what He won't do for you or vice versa. He's good. He's good. And He'll show you some results. It just takes a little bit of faith. What it did for me, I, I'm not bragging, but at one time I was pretty strong for a little guy. <laughs> I myself into some places that I had to get myself out of. And, uh, I wanted to prove to myself and my family that I still had strength. Maybe not to lift a ton, but more strength. If you have to want to go bad, just take the Lord. I'll guarantee, I'll guarantee you'll see results. in the past, right? 
so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. For by his wounds you were healed. Now is that past tense or future tense or what tense? Past tense. So how were you healed? By his wounds. Actually before the cross when he got beaten and whipped and all that. His flesh was torn. All that he went through before he even got to the cross is when he was healing you. That's when he healed you. It's not a question of whether he wants to or not. He already has. Now, now our now our part of it is to is to get revelation of that and find out what it is that's blocking it. Because the devil, the devil's counting on you to say, well, it must not be. Because here's what I was really going to read tonight, Matthew. 13, and it's in Luke 2 somewhere. Well, it's a, maybe all of them. But where Jesus talking about sowing seed. Remember, remember a while back when Miss Marilyn got healed of migraines? All I had her up here talking about sowing seed. At the end of that little deal, it said, you know, a sower sowed seed. And, the, and the Jesus explained it all. It said, the seed is the Word. So when you sow the Word, that, that some of it will fall on stony ground and some will get any good and some falls by the wayside and the birds steal it. Some of it sprouts up quick, scorched and all. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing it all, making it quick. But at the end of that, but he said, some of it falls on good soil and bears fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Now the Word says, we just read the Word. Let's just use that right there, for example. 1 Peter 2 says, by his wounds, you were healed. Now according to that, are you healed? Yes. Okay, that's the Word of God. According to that, that's the seed. The seed's sown. The seed's sown. Now some falls on good ground and brings forth fruit. Some 30, some 60, and some 100. Alright, now let's say 30. 30%. Because here's what happened when a seed, he goes on and teaches this, seed falls in the ground and dies and, and sprouts, for long there's just a blade. Then for long there's a stalk. Then for long there's fruit. Or corn or whatever. So he's saying first 30, if, if you just got 30% there, that means there's still 70% that says it's not. See, I remember when I was first learning this and I was getting healed, I got healed all kinds of stuff and people around me, there's been a ton of people in here uh, that's been healed. But what, what happened was, you know what, you got some of the seed that started sprouting up and you got 30% healed. Now that's better, ain't it? 30% is better, but when you got 30% that's better, you still got 70% that's not. And so our old religious selves and our old doubtful selves would say 70% is not and our eyes would be on the not and we'd say it didn't work. God must not heal. But when we hang on to the 30, 30 turns into 60. Oh, well, let's say 60 then. Okay, 60, that's quite a bit better. That's pretty good. But there's still 40 that's not. A little saying I see there. It don't work. No. Look at the 60. For long, 60 turns into 100. Yeah. But you got to stay with it. Yes. Good ground. It says in there one of those, one, some of the seed fell on, on a rocky soil where there wasn't very, it says it wasn't firmly rooted. Wasn't deeply rooted, some of them says. I believe that is the grace revelation. Deeply rooted is the grace revelation because now you're rooted in something that's solid and it's not based on you and it can't be uprooted. We're good soil because we've got the grace revelation. Mm -hmm. And when you got the grace revelation, you can keep your eyes on the 30. Because it ain't about me. So what if you just got 30? That's okay, isn't it? 
30 is better than none. Let's say, let's be thankful for the 30 and just say it's working. And for long, 30 turns into 60. But the minute you say the 30s, oh man, 30, I still got 70, and you start looking at the 70, you'll just be like Peter walking on, you know, walking on the water. You start looking at the waves, blue, blue, blue. The devil's counting on you giving up on it. Look here, look here. Hebrews 4.12 The Word of God, that's the seed, is quick, that means alive, and powerful. The Word of God is alive and powerful. The Word of God is alive and powerful. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Where's that? Let's see. What was that one? Where's that one? Psalms 107, I think. Psalms 107. It says, He sent His Word and healed Him. He sent His Word and heal them. Psalm 107 20. Somebody look at that. 107 20. See if I'm right. Right? He sent his word, seed, and heal them. Remember the centurion? You know, it's, it's like this. You asked about how many ways there was. It's all tied together. But Jesus went through that one time. The heading says Jesus healed many. Jarius, the synagogue leader, religious dude, came by. And he said, Jesus, my daughter is sick. If you'll come to my house and lay hands on her, she'll be made well. Jesus says, okay. Way they go. Then along the way, here comes the woman with the issue of blood. She says, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made well. Basically says, okay. She gets healed. And then here comes the Roman centurion. Roman centurion says, my servant at home is sick and he needs to be healed. Jesus says, all right, we'll go, we'll go see him. The Roman centurion says, you don't even have to go. I'm not even worthy that you come to my house. Just say the word and you'll be healed. Amen. Jesus says, wow. I ain't, seen, I ain't seen any faith like this in all of the church. I mean all of Israel. He wasn't, he wasn't religious, see. He wasn't even a Jew. He was a Roman. Jesus said, I ain't even seen any of God's chosen people with this kind of faith. That guy said, you just speak the word, my servant. In other words, however you believe it to be is how it will be. Amen. That's right. Just believe it to be. Yep. Even if it's 30, just believe it's going to be 100. Amen. Believe that it's working. It's growing. Thank you, Lord. A farmer doesn't go out there and plant corn, do all that work, and that thing up about that high and look at that little blade and say, no crop on this stuff, disc it up. believes in what's unseen yes. says it's working. Yeah, yeah well God feeds the sea. Yeah, God sends the water. Yeah, God sends the water. God sends the feed. He provides it all. I need healing. Can you 
see it all? Well, then you've at least got 30.
what goes in your heart. Mm -hmm. What goes in your heart. The heart is where truth is. When you renew your mind to this truth instead of this truth, prove what the will of God is. Thirty, sixty, hundred. Thirty, sixty, hundred. If you're at thirty, it's alright. Just keep looking at thirty. Don't look at the seventy. Look at the thirty. It's working. It's growing. Coming. It ain't by your power. If you're at 60, that's pretty good. Don't look at the 40. You start looking at 40, that lying, rotten devil is stealing away from you. Yeah. Anybody in here ever been healed pretty much and almost healed and pretty good healed and then, then all of a sudden slide backwards and you're like, what the heck happened? Rotten. He'll do everything he can to get you back off of it. He'll do everything he can to try to get you get your eyes on the 70 or the 40. He's met his match. Amen. Bunch of hard headed folks from Toys Bill That's right. We're gonna get ours. What do you want to do now? <laughs> in that field. <laughs> yeah. You know, me and Dean were actually talking about that, I think. But uh, I forget how I said that now. Oh, you know the story of Ruth? Ruth is in the Old Testament. And Ruth, oh, that's a long story. Uh, but Ruth, anyway, was poor and lost everything, pretty much. Didn't have nothing, so it was allowed to, whoever owned the field that was crops, you could go in behind the reapers, and whatever they drop on the ground, you could have that. That's what she lived on. And so, anyway, the guy that owned the field was, was actually kin to her, and in those customs and times... If, you, if your husband died, the next of kin would be come in to be your husband. Next of kin, and then just went so on and so on, nobody else. So the guy that owned the field was actually her next of kin. I'm just telling this in my own. And so anyway, she shows up and she's gleaning. They call it gleaning is when you're going behind all the harvesters and you're just picking up a little bit off the ground what's left. And eventually... Eventually, she, the kin, the guy that owned the field was her kinsman redeemer, which is a picture of who Jesus is with us. And so then he marries her and then, you know, ends up together. And so I sent this, what Elvis was getting at, said, Ruth was gleaning in the field that she would soon own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Glory to God. It looked like she was a poor beggar. Yeah. Just around the corner, she would own the field. She went from 30 to 100. God wants to be good to us. Amen. Amen. Let's just believe God wants to be good to us. Let's heal our bodies. He doesn't want us living in lack. He wants us to be so blessed and have everything we need running out of our ears so when the brother's in need, we've got more than enough. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's believe He wants to heal our marriages and 
live in victory and peace in the home and and same kids. <laughs> same parents. Because here's the thing, if you won't, if you don't believe it, you won't have it. That's right. That's right. I'm just I'm just deciding I'm gonna believe it. And wait on him to grow it, because I'll give up on myself. And I'm going to keep on telling this. And here's why. Because are we going to see everybody live in it? Are we going to see everybody healed and all that? Probably not. But what about them little ones that grow up here? We waited until now that we started hearing it. And we're trying to retrain and retransform and all this. But what, what if you've grown up in, in a place here and week after week about healing? That's right. Yeah. That's right. What if you've grown up in a place where, where they told the truth about that we don't have to be poor old religious beggars and do without? That's right. What if they've grown up hearing that, hey, we're the sons of God and we're supposed to be ruling and running this outfit? Amen. Yeah. What if they grown up believing that they really did have more power than the dog on devil? Amen. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Their floor or their their ceiling is gonna be our floor. They're gonna go on. That's that ain't right. Their floor is gonna be our ceiling. There you go. Their floor is going to be our ceiling. All done. All done. You want to make them sing or not? Yeah. Tell us about my boy. How's my boy nowadays? My boy? My boy's doing good. He's, uh, I, I, my boy... My beans are. Oh, go ahead. That was a few yes. Go ahead. My boy has got some appointments coming up. People are watching that DVD or they're watching that on YouTube. You know, all these things are on YouTube. And so there's some people, a lot, a lot of people watching him that when I had him in here, watching that on DVD and YouTube and all that. And uh, uh, he's got a lot of appointments. People want me to bring him to places and all that. We're actually supposed to be bringing him to the uh, Illinois Horse Fair. It's at Springfield, March 7, 8, and 9. And he really needs a miracle. Uh, he got kicked the other day. And uh, he's, he's a lot better. But he, he's, he's, he's a lot better. So, but he's doing good. The more valuable you are, the more the devil's after you. That's right. Get ready. No, we ain't gonna take up an offering, but we just want to uh, just there he is. If he's doing good, there's big plans for him. Yeah. I gotta share something with you quick. Last week I was working on a big report. I've been working on this thing for three, about three months. A big what? A big report at work. And I was about blurry eyed from all these spreadsheets and things. And I had that My Boy CD. And the night you brought My Boy in, I put it in my computer and started listening with my, my earbud on. Next thing I know, my hand was tapping the mic, the mouse on my desk. And my neighbor in the office next to me because I was listening to him singing. So I was tapping my mouse, not paying no attention, and my neighbor walks around and looks at me. By the time he started talking, I just went quiet. So he, he started walking back over to his office, and I started to laugh. I got thinking about you standing up on my boy and telling him about Brandon and the whole bit, and just how funny that was. And he come back in, and he said, what are you doing? I said, you've got to come sit and listen. Well, let me tell you what he was doing before you do. He left my office, took my CD, and went down the hall and shared it with two, three more people. I didn't get it back home for about three days. <laughs> what a story. I, I just, it was really tough. <laughs> 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 
that up for y'all too on that Romans 12, 1 and 2. Part of that scripture I really loved. The other part of it I just, something didn't drive right in my spirit. I will read that. I, I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So I thought, a living sacrifice? Hmm? The walking dead? That's what that sounds like to me. Sacrifice is something that has literally been killed. Last time, I haven't been killed yet. And so, uh, and then he goes on and says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, uh, I found a scripture in Colossians 1, 21 and 22. And it says, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present your body, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. It says in the body of His flesh through death. So we present ourselves as Him. It says in John 17 that He is, he is in the Father, and the Father is in Him, and we are in Him, and we are one. So it doesn't say that Sarah presents herself as dead, and because I got saved or whatever else I'm